Hey everybody, this is Birch. Um, and this is one of those, I, I promise this is not a video about Twitter, um, but it starts on Twitter like so many things do. Uh, anyway, uh, a, a gentleman by the name of Eric Palicki, who has been on this show, actually, we've done an interview with him, does a lot of really cool stuff, good crowdfunding stuff, good books. Um, and he he posted what I think is probably the most benign statement. And that, the thing that kind of strikes me about the whole, kind of everything that unfolded, like so many things on Twitter slash X do, is there really isn't a hot take here. It's, it's you know, one of the things about Twitter is they find ways to take innocent takes and turn them into hot takes. And in fairness, it's not just Twitter. I mean, how many times have I said on this show, um, hey, look, um, you know, there needs to be more money in comics. And that erupts into, what? Advocation for socialism? Then Vita will be a millionaire. What are you, ah, you know, and, and like, you know, if I always, I just wonder, is it, is it somebody intentionally clowning or really that dumb? Like what, what, where, where in the spectrum does it go? Um, or is it, hey, anyway, I, a lot of very benign takes turn into hot takes and that's what this is. So Eric Flicky says, um, <clears throat> comics needs rock stars. I don't know if rock star is the best term for it. But in lieu of a better one, someone, or preferably several someones, whose mystique attracts an audience beyond existing readers and gets people legitimately excited about the medium. All right, why is that not any kind of hot take? Well, I mean, obviously. I mean, no offense, Eric. I, that's, a, that's a very, very benign take. Because basically what it's saying is, comics needs to grow. We need people beyond the existing readers to come in. And one way to do that are some bigger than life personalities that bring people in. That's that that's it. So to use a wrestling analogy, Hulk Hogan was a quote unquote rock star or icon or kind of larger than life personality that brought people into wrestling. It it took people, you know, there's a core audience that would would watch wrestling and that was part of their you know, their family's tradition through the 60s and 70s and however long, and Hulk Hogan in the 80s came in and it expanded. They started selling out Madison's Garden and other things. And then many, many years later, you know, you had other people come in. You had Shawn Michaels, you have Ric Flair, you have Bret Hart. Uh, you have, I mean, you know, another example, uh, probably a, a weirder one would be Goldberg. This is a wrestler who uh, got people very excited and, and, you know, there's a little bit of a crossover appeal. Obviously, the biggest example in recent memory besides a uh, you know your stone cold steve austin and john cena is the rock the rock brought people to watch wrestling because he was a quote-unquote rock star he was bigger it it increased the audience beyond the existing wrestling fans and this is good for wrestling if you look at kind of cinema and movies you look at people like walt disney way back in the day who you know, brought legitimacy to animation and what kind of bigger life personality. And if you look at comics, you have somebody like Stan Lee. If you go a little further, people point out, you know, hey, Rob Liefeld was in a Levi's commercial once. That's true. Was it Levi's? Uh, jeans, anyway. He was in a jeans commercial once, and this was a, a bigger deal. Uh, but for a period of time, the Image 6, and really it was Todd McFarlane, Jim Lee, and Rob Liefeld were the big ones. And they kind of, you know, I, I, hey, I, of that whole crew from an art style perspective, Mark Silvestri will always have my heart. But anyway, that those, those names became bigger and it drew new people in. And the reality is, we haven't had one of those in a very, very long time. So again, I think this is a really kind of benign tweet. And frankly, he, he gave, kind of the, you know, the, the defense or the protection in his second line. Comics needs rock stars. His very next sentence, I don't know if rock star is the best term for it, in lieu of a better one. And then he explains what he means because, maybe in Eric's mind, I don't know, he's thinking, boy, I wouldn't want people to misinterpret that, that uh, I'm not saying comics needs, you know, drug-addicted lunatics who are going to smash hotel rooms and, you know, cause general chaos. That's not what I mean by rock stars. Only a fool would think that. Well, as it turns out, lots of fools out there. So, like again, like at all things, people uh, took issue with that. Uh, uh, but I think a majority or large amount of people got what he meant very, very easily. 
Um, and in fact, you know, one of the very first lines, basically another Stan Lee or Walt Disney in a way. And Eric uh, responds, Stan, Alan Moore and Grant Morrison for a time, Gaiman, Ennis at the height of the sheer audacity of Preacher, Warren Ellis for a moment. Um, I, I don't agree with some of those. Alan Moore transcended for sure. Grant Morrison always was kind of bumping right up against that ceiling. And I'll explain, by the way, what I mean in, in, by that in a moment. But, um, you know, Neil Gaiman, for sure. He had that bigger you know, persona. I think Mark Millar, for sure, uh, got there. Um, but that's that's kind of what we're talking about. So why do people get um, angry? Well, they got hung up on rock star. Like, rock star is a short term. Rock star is fleeting. Rock star means somebody whose ego runs out of control. And and certainly we have no examples of that in comics on Twitter. Uh, in fact, the, the wacky part is some of the people who were most fiercely attacking Palicki's point um, were uh, are some of the most arrogant a-holes that are on, on Twitter uh, by a mile. Um, it's the, uh, you know, it, it's it, it, people gravitated to the negative aspects of it. You know, we don't need rock stars. We don't need big publishers chasing that next big star. No, that's that wasn't the point. The point was get a personality that's going to do something big. That's the point. That's what we're after. That's, you know, that is really the magic that's trying to be created here. And that's what we mean by rock star. And that's it's, it's undeniable. Again, unless you want comics to stay as a cottage industry, to stay as a tiny little clubhouse where, hey, we're comfortable with the people in the clubhouse, but we, you know, we're also all poor and uh, we're going to complain about not getting royalties. We're going to complain about not being a sustainable lifestyle. But, you know, we, we really like the same 10 people we see and they're 10 handpicked friends that get to be here with us. And we really don't want to grow it, which few people will say out loud, but that is exactly what's on several people's mind. Uh, comics needs hundreds of thousands of people coming into it. And there's a lot of different methods. I've talked about distribution until I'm blue in the face, but another is good ambassadors. And you could call them a rock star. You could call it an ambassador. You could call it a evangelist. You could call it a, you know, an you know, <laughs> emissary or I you could you could use all kinds of words. You could call it an icon. But basically, you need your rock, the rock, to be able to be able to get people excited and get into comics. And it goes without saying, because it's stupid if you always have to do this qualification, that you'd like that person not to be a, you know, maniacal, crazy egomaniac destroying things around them, backstabbing, sending night letters, warning people who's a good person or who's a bad person. Again, what strikes me is several of the people I saw show up to rip uh, Palicki's uh, tweet and his point are some of the exact same people one of the exact same people that, you know, a couple of years ago would send me frequent mails saying, hey, do you know who you're following? Hey, you shouldn't follow that person. Hey, uh, you know, hey, I don't th I think people are going to think you're weird if you, uh, you know, they're going to think you're a bad guy if you say that word. Those are the people who are who who that is rock star behavior. That is the kind of gatekeeping bullshit that quite frankly, is the bad part of being a rock star, where the ego goes out of control that you think you can control everything around you. This is definitely not what Eric was calling for. Eric was calling for the most obvious of obvious things. Now, a minute ago, I said, I, I don't think uh, Grant Morrison uh, or Warren Ellis, uh, for that matter, we hit this, this category. And I'll explain what I mean by that. And I think it also goes into some confusion. Yeah, it's true. Warren Ellis was a big name in comics. It's also true he kind of conducted himself like a rock star or a bigger-than-life personality inside comics. But Ellis never crossed over. He, he did that Castlevania thing. But if you go outside of comic books and you say the name Warren Ellis, you'll be lucky if people know who you're talking about. He did not certainly bring, you know, great legions of new people into comics who had no interest in comics. And I, I'm not saying there wasn't the occasional person who found the Ellis forums or like, this guy's funny and... And they picked up Next Wave and it was a good time. I mean, sure. But hopefully everybody can see the distinct difference between a Stan Lee, you know, uh, and Warren Ellis in terms of somebody who truly kind of got outside of comics and was bigger than comics. You know, Jack Kirby's legend, 
most of which, uh, unfortunately, came after his passing. I mean, he was a huge name. Don't get me wrong. If you're in comics, you knew Jack Kirby and you idolized Jack Kirby. But a lot of the Jack Kirby was a you know Disney legend and Jack Kirby was a creative genius, unfortunately, came after his passing. So one reason why it'd be good to hold these people up before they die, so they can kind of see some of this, uh, some of this stuff. But uh, to the to the larger mainstream, you know, Stan Lee was a household name. Warren Ellis was not. Neil Gaiman is very celebrated uh, writer. Has a look, has a style, has that rock star kind of you know look and feel and style. Um, he he is. I said uh, Mark Millar. Mark Millar is 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 kind of right. You know, definitely a big name in comics. Definitely has, uh, you know, is, is you know, I, I would say because of the Netflix deals and some of the other kind of promotion and things he's done, he pushes into media outside of comics. Somebody mentioned like, hey, Tom Taylor is a rock star. Again, um, in comics, people know who Tom Taylor is. He, he could do an interview on CNN. But he's not somebody who's bringing huge people in. Another person said, well, look at Keanu Reeves. He's a rock star. Look how that worked out. Um, yeah, it worked out pretty well for Boom. And uh, so people were like, well, that thing was a flop. Um, it, it was not a flop. Berserker and and kind of everything that went on there. Um, I, I mean, look, if you're somebody working for Boom, writing for Boom, getting money from Boom, you, you, you hopefully understand that some of the work that you see in Boom, you're only seeing because of how that deal went down and some of the stuff that happened for that Kickstarter and that those, those first issues. Keanu Reeves is actually a very good example of somebody who came in. No, the comic is not on issue 50. He's not showing up at Comic-Cons. But the fact that he, he, he did what he did, frankly, put Boom higher on the map, gave it some funding, and allowed it to hire other people and get other work. Uh, there was one writer in particular who was just ripping Keanu Reeves as taking... You know, taking operation uh, you know, uh, opportunities away from us. We don't need more people like that. And it's like, I know for a fact, the only reason you got one of the books you did was because there was money to give it to you because of Keanu Reeves and what happened with that book. So seriously, this is uh, absurd behavior. But, you know, I, I, to kind of sum up, I, again, it, it's it's wacky that this caused controversy. And for several days, you know, he, he got raked through the mud of, you know, wanting to destroy comics and wanting to put, you know, bad people in comics. A little bit, it's like kind of like saying, you know, hey, if you have a hospital, you know, you need doctors. And then somebody turning around and going, well, you know, some of those doctors are sex offenders. You why, you say we want sex offenders there? It's like, oh, okay, hold on. what What are you talking about? Every human being has a potential to do all kinds of things, good things and bad things. You don't take the bad things and then lump them into the category as a reason not to do something. That is absurd. It may get you attention, attention, quite frankly, that rock stars crave on social media, but it, it, it you're just being an absurd human being. The comics absolutely is in a state where it needs a lot of help grow the audience. And you'd be a fool if you didn't take the very, very, very obvious, you know, endorsement or, you know, rock star or icon or whoever it might be to help give more of that promotion. It, it, anyway, <laughs> you get the idea. Anyway, throw Eric some love. He's got some good books out there that he does. Um, definitely, I feel bad for him of, because uh, we've all, you know, we've all been there. I've certainly been there. Uh, here's something entirely benign. Or, you know, here's something that oh, nobody could possibly disagree with in a sane and rational world. Well, here we are. Anyway, thanks for listening.